Welcome back. Chinese leader Xi Jinping is proving himself to be serious about cracking down on corruption. 20,000 officials were punished last year. Not a week goes by without news of another arrest. And a really big fish. The retired head of security and member of the top leadership, Zhou Yin Kong, is reported to be under house arrest. Dozens, maybe hundreds of people close to him have been arrested. Now there's word that two top generals are in big trouble too. Generals Xu Zai Ho and Guo Bo Shang are being investigated for selling army promotions. To give us the scoop, we have Francesco Sishi with us again. Sishi is a columnist for the online newspaper Asia Times. Hello, Francesco. Hi, thank you, Chui. So who are Guo and Xu and how big are they? Well, first of all, they are very big. They are the former vice chairman of the Central Military Commission, de facto the two men who run the army. Now, the army is not simply the army as in any other country. This is uh, the main constituency, political constituency, the kingpins of uh, political unity and uh, you know, ultimate order bearer of the Communist Party. So this is uh, really extremely big. What is Xi Jinping doing going after powerful people in the PLA? Is his crackdown unprecedented? It is, uh, I think, in my mind, an unprecedented step to huge reforms. We still don't know where he's heading, but definitely he's concentrating a lot of power. He's uh, taking on all the vested interests which are uh, against him or lukewarm against, uh, about him. And then uh, we don't know how he's going to use this power. But we know that he is uh, really keen on uh, changing the country in, uh, for the better, for what in the West we think is, uh, is a better way. Do you feel she might be going out on a limb by purging top party officials like Zhou Yang Kang and top generals? Well, uh, there are risks, uh, certainly. However, I think um, in the party, he has already enough power to guarantee his position so that if uh, those generals were to challenge his authority, in a way, the whole system would be challenged and then everybody would lose out. So there would be no clear winner. So it's uh, easier for any single general to try to bide his time and see if he gets or get, doesn't get punished. So risks, yes, but I would say calculated. All right. Well, Francesco Sisci, always nice to have you on and have your analysis. Thank you so much. Thank you, too, for having me there. Thank you. Francesco Sisci is a longtime China expert and writes a column for Asia Times. Moving on now to Southeast Asia, Thailand's embattled prime minister might wish she could eliminate her political enemies too. But Ying Luck Shinner Watch will have to fight them at the ballot box. This week, Thailand's election commission told Ying Luck there would be another general election on July 20th. The last one in February was disrupted by thousands of street demonstrators in Bangkok. They want Ying Luck gone because they charge she's a tool of her brother, Toxin. He fled the country in 2008 to avoid jail for corruption and abuse of power. But he said to run the country through Skype and email. The main opposition party has not said whether it will take part in July's election, and the protesters haven't said whether they would allow it to go ahead. They know Ying Luck is likely to win. Her party has won every election since 2000. It has huge support in Thailand's rural areas and among the urban poor. Airwaves, a global channel of uncompromising stories. World news, documentaries, entertainment, and culture. Link TV, connecting you to the world. For more information, visit linktv.org.